Okay, great. Um, uh, welcome everybody. We have uh, some guests who are here to talk about something that's not on the agenda. So uh, just after a brief agenda review, I think we'll take a motion to suspend the rules so you can uh, talk to us and uh, then be on your way as, as you need to be. Um, what I, I hope we will be able to do tonight, we have a lot of different kinds of announcements, but hope that we will be able to uh, call final the Pierce Island uh, RFP. And I do have a, a list of contacts for everybody to take a look at and add to. Uh, the one thing I think we will want to do is look at the schedule uh, for that and make sure that we're all on board with the, with the schedule. Um, and then the other thing I, I hope we will make sure we do is to, if there are any comments on the changes we want in the public art ordinance so we can get that to the to the council for uh, consideration. And then hopefully we'll have some time, if you all picked up a cultural plan, to talk about any implications uh, that we have from the cultural plan for uh, our work. I have a few uh, notes from looking through it and I know most of you have had a chance to look through it. So uh, I think it's just important that we kind of bring those up to the fore so we have those in mind. Uh, so with that, I take a motion to suspend the rules and do public comment now. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 Beth. Who, is that? Who seconded? Beth. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So who's going to speak? Kathleen? Hi. Is there any place right here? Yes. Okay. Let me see. I actually prepared something, so I'm just going to read directly from this. Um Okay. Thank you oh, for. You should introduce yourself. Oh, I will. Yes, it's in second paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go out of order. It will mess everything up. Um, so, thank you for allowing me to speak this evening to present an opportunity for the city of Portsmouth to embrace an inclusive, welcoming, permanent art project for the LGBTQ plus community. I am Kathleen Cavallaro. Uh, some of you may know me, but for the sake of the record, I am a Seacoast activist. I am the former executive director of the Seacoast Repertory Theater. I'm a former board member of Seacoast Outright. I'm a bisexual woman and I'm proudly part of the community, community this piece of art will represent. On July 11th of 2021, I launched a Facebook fundraiser called Pride Crosswalks in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. A person in one of our online community groups posted an innocent post along the likes of, it would be nice to have rainbow crosswalks in Portsmouth like other cities. Unfortunately, bigots jumped out of the woodwork to express their disdain and intolerance of the Seacoast queer community, which I love and belong to. I learned in the middle of the fundraiser that the city would not support rainbow crosswalks, so I updated our donors to let them know that if this project were denied, we would donate the funds for a highly visible LGBTQ plus art installation somewhere in the down. Everyone was still on board with either outcome. In less than one week, we had surpassed our $10,000 goal with 363 donations from people in the Portsmouth community and surrounding towns, Shortly after, I had learned that the city did not have a mechanism in place to accept an earmarked donation. I was told this would be in the works and to wait, so we waited. <laughs> Why this project? Uh, we like to think of Portsmouth as an accepting city, but even in one of our most tolerant cities in the state of New Hampshire, hate still hides around corners, as we've seen with frequent visitors of fascist groups targeting members of the LGBTQ community and minorities at large. I don't think I need to name them all. They will continue to come to Portsmouth because it is a beacon of tolerance and progress. And it's imperative we have a visual representation for them to see from the city itself, not individual residents or businesses that our minority communities are celebrated and their bigotry, their bigotry is not welcomed. We are here, they can go to hell. <laughs> Additionally, as we are seeing persistent waves of anti-trans legislation, including new ones introduced only a few weeks ago, it is imperative we show our transgender community that we stand with them. This is a prelude to our LGBTQ plus legislation. It is not a hidden agenda. The community statewide and nationwide is anxious and they should be. In the past two years, I have remained in touch with the city and even at one point was ready to start refunding donations as mach machinery moves slowly but I was told that the city would work toward creating a way for projects such as this to happen. And if I could just wait a little longer, I might finally see today. So I am so pleased to be here. 
I have $10,000 ready to hand over to this arts committee if you are willing to pursue this project. The idea is simple. Paint an intersectional rainbow crosswalk. If a rainbow crosswalk is not possible, then to find a city-owned property, such as the outside of the Hanover garage, to paint something for our community to enjoy that represents the same. It doesn't have to be cut and paste from other cities or projects, merely entirely representational. This project does come with some important stipulations if you were to accept it. The Arts Committee must work with LGBTQ plus artists and or organizations to ensure that there is true representation involved and that there are queer voices at the table. This project must be created in the downtown Portsmouth area in a highly visible place. That there is a plan to maintain and repair the project when it is inevitably worn or vandalized. I would release half of the funds upon approval of the, this project and the remaining funds after a plan has been created and approved that honors the intent. If this committee chooses not to accept these funds, I will begin the process of refunding donations one at a time. I do believe that art is activism, and I thank you for all that you do. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out at any point. Uh, uh, you know how to get in touch. I, I think there will be questions. Okay. Um, I, I think the first question would be, uh, because unfortunately in the scheme of costing 10,000 is not a lot of money. So mm -hmm. I would ask what your preferences are in terms of, is your, is your preference a crosswalk or do, you know, in the various things that you talked about, um, what do you see as, you know, the visibility, I, yeah. I get the criteria that you put forth, but is the preference a crosswalk, a sidewalk, something on the garage? Well, I mean, my personal preference, I think, is different than what the community donated to. And it was for the uh, rainbow crosswalks. Okay, but they did uh, my personal preference, um, just because since I did this, you see acts of vandalism and it's easy for people to just, you know, do tire marks on it. And it's a little bit harder for people to deface something that's, you know, you have to actively plan for that. My personal preference would be an art installation. But again, these are over 300 donors who donated to a rainbow crosswalk. That's so. a very good point. Um, and and just to and for our committee to think about is we do know with the we will have uh, money coming to us well we actually have it uh, for the high Hanover garage because of the rehabilitation so the potential possibly might be something for us to think about connecting a crosswalk in some way to the high Hanover where we will have other monies to you know maybe place something more in context um, because I think the the one-off crosswalk especially when we think about maintenance yeah. you know I was in Dover last week and I've seen how those have faded terribly and, yeah. and you know crosswalks have to be done every year yeah. as you guys probably know so I think so it isn't just a, a one-off that fades away right. maybe thinking about how we can connect the donor desires to something that can have some more life to it. But uh, questions from people. Yeah, Kate. Um, I just wanted to make a quick comment on that um, because this would this did come up at parking traffic um, parking and traffic safety last week because um, they knew that there'd been post online that this was coming forward um, soon. And so um, they wanted to ask the question about crosswalks and the the city engineers concerns and DPW's concerns around it is the paint actually for crosswalks is very expensive and they're worried that it isn't enough money to maintain it over time right. because it does fade quickly. So there is that challenge. So they're concerned about that and, and um, suggested what are other options that would be more permanent so that it wouldn't, you wouldn't lose the work of art so quickly. Right. So that was, that's the question that they had. Um, and is there something you know, close by that could be considered, um, uh, for example, uh, uh, the transformers, the electrical transformer boxes in town, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, the high Hanover or something in the vicinity of downtown where you could have a piece that was more similar to like the Ruth Blay piece. So that you weren't necessarily painting, but you were putting a, an applique that would not require as much maintenance. So I think those were the questions with the yeah, the cost concern. So that's that's what DPW expressed last week. So Beth, did you have a question? Uh, no, I just came back from LA though, and they had the crosswalks, but their weather is a bit more forgiving. But they're quite striking. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, other questions? So what I think this suggests to us is along the lines of what Kate said, we would probably need to do a little research and work and thinking about how can we how can we make this work in a way that does have a longer life to it? And then probably probably respond back to you in that memo and see if that meets the criteria. Yeah, Lenny. Uh, question for Kathleen. Uh, so the $10,000 donation came from, you said, about approximately 300 individuals. Is over, yeah, I think it was 363 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is the, uh, the fundraising still ongoing or has that closed? No, that closed uh, about a week after I launched it in 2021. Um, yeah, 363. So it's been a while, but um, my involvement in this project other than handing the funds over would that would be it but I would be more than happy if at any point if additional funds were needed to help facilitate more fundraising I mean that's another way to think of this that this starts one piece that then yeah expands. it could be like seed money yeah and then there might be percent of the art from Hanover Garage or other money monies that could exactly be added yeah. to it yeah, but I do think we should be serious about maintenance because they look terrible when they start to fade, and that's not a good message. Um, mm -hmm. And that happens very quickly with with our weather. Right. And um, during this fundraiser, uh, there was someone who reached out to me who actually sells this paint and lives locally and was very invested in uh, collaborating and offering a substantial dick I would have to go look and I don't want to speak for this poor person if my memory is failing me <laughs> but I know that they uh, were a part of this community and wanted to help make it happen so I can go look back in those records and see if that would be that helpful would be great. Yeah. I just want to say in we can expand our thinking when we discuss this as a group into areas that may be more difficult to either keep up with our weather or for potential um, vandalism, which is light installations, light and color go really well together. So we may That's be true. able to think about this in a more um, uh, media like way. And depending on where it is, it could be viewable only at night or indoor, outdoor, but um, there's this incredible light installation in Alexandria, Virginia, that comes up in front of their, one of their, um, I think it's like some money exchange bill. I don't know. It's some federal building. And at night, it's just fantastic. During the day, they're just sculptures. And at night, they light up. Anyway, so I'm just thinking it does, that might be something mm -hmm. that is less Interesting. easy to mess with, um, especially if it's projected light. You know, I was also thinking because we we now have commissioned the second piece for um, the Bohengo Gateway Park. There's a sidewalk there, you know, the sidewalk that goes the full length of the road, which would take less wear and tear than a, a crosswalk. That might also be a visible plus. Mm. And that's kind of the road really into town, which kind of fits your visibility. That wouldn't have plow trucks necessarily going over it. Exactly. Um, yeah, okay. I think the biggest concern is that the last thing you want to do is paint a crosswalk and then take it away because you can't maintain it because that sends the wrong message. Yeah, exactly. You know, you want to make sure that the message is clear, you know, that, that you're supporting this community and you're supporting it for the long. So I think what we should do is put this on our agenda for our next meeting. People think about it. We do some of the research that you're talking about in the, in the meantime, and then um, we, our process is, um, because we're a review committee, our process is to develop the recommendations that go to the council and go in this case to public works. So, but Kathleen, you should, you, you are the, you're the lynch person here for our, our work. You're the, uh, person we should communicate with. Um, for now, yeah, I would love to, um, I'm moving in a few weeks across the country and, but, you know, obviously there's email and other technologies that will right. allow me to, but, um, I, I would love to, um, be able to hand it over to completely capable people such as yourself and be as involved with it as little as little as possible. I would love to just be able to trust that, you know, you know, the intent and then hand the funds and, come back and visit it in the future, but mm -hmm. my involvement 
does not need to be yeah. large. So are there other people who you, like your colleagues who accompanied you here, who would, um, who, where, who would help think about what's appropriate for the community if you're if you were moving elsewhere? Um, I, before the former ED at uh, Seacoast Outright, we were in collaboration and she was going to help us, but no, um, I haven't reached out to the new ED, but that would that would be my recommendation is that you work with an organization. That's like, yeah. yeah, 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 that's Thank perfect. Thank you. Thank you, I Thanks. appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. All right, so um, next on the agenda uh, to accept the minutes of February 28th. A motion to accept the minutes. Second. And second uh, by Jen. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, I should have asked if there were any corrections. <laughs> so if there weren't or you would have spoken up. Um, May I just interject one thing though? At some point we're gonna have to approve as a group the donated oh, works of right. art because that was a donation. <laughs> yes, you're right. So we just need to make sure that we get that on the agenda. You're right. The criteria right. for the donated oh, correct. Of art, but yes. That we have, we've accepted it because we've talked about it, but we haven't accepted it yet. You're right. Sean, would you remember to send that back out to everybody so we can... If you don't have it, I'll send it to you. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'll have the most updated version yeah. <laughs> rather than choosing multiple versions. Thank you, Jen. No. So um <laughs> Beth and somebody else reminded us that we didn't we didn't fully build out our calendar for this year and we really need to to do that. Um, so I've put on the agenda with various caveats. Uh, these are all the fourth Wednesdays, but sometimes the fourth Wednesday is not a very good day. Um, and I don't expect us to do this tonight because I think you'll have to check calendars and whatever. Um, what I think, especially with vacations, is important that if if you know you're going to be gone on certain days, we should just check to make sure we have enough of a quorum that it's worth meeting. But um, between now and then, if everybody can check what works here, what I, um, you know, October, if you, if you go down, I think, uh, May 29th probably is okay. Memorial Day is the 27th, but that's um, people would take probably the previous um, Thursday off. October 30th is always Portsmouth Halloween. Mm. So that does not make <laughs> sense for us to do that. And if we did October 23rd, that actually puts us in a good um, plan to then do the earlier November 20th, which mm -hmm. moves us away from Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and then the earlier Christmas, which which moves us away from Christmas. So uh, those really end up being the third Wednesday, so that would depart from it. But if um, if everybody can check and uh, let maybe just drop me a line of which ones you know you can't do, and then we'll see if they're anywhere we don't have a quorum, we might look for an alternate uh, date or know that we're not going to meet that. Yeah, Kate. I just wanted to let you know that I will not be here for next month. Okay. So, um, but I don't, I don't matter to the quorum. Um, just anything that you want to pass on to the council, let me know. Okay. So that's something we'll take up, you know, next time when everybody's had a chance to look. Chris, do you want feedback now on that? Oh no, we. I think because people will need to check calendars and other things, and then we can. Uh, just do that in an organized way. Um, some updates. We did go to the council on the 18th with uh, what's now called Cod in the Mortal Sea. That's its official title. <laughs> it says uh, given at that title, which I think is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, it, because he wanted to honor Jeff Bolster's work as well, which I think is, is great. Um, and council has approved this. Um, Sean, you're, you've been working on a contract with Terrence or working to get to the, a contract place, right? Not a actual document. Right. We're, we're identifying the 
funding to be able to create a contract. Yes. To create a contract because, yeah. because um, we felt that both for Terrence's protection and for our protection, there needs to be a contract between the city and Terrence so that, you know, money can be charged against that contract. A lot of the cost here is upfront cost. Um, we have been in touch with the 400th and it appears that there's a little bit more money than we thought we had last time. So we know we have a little flexibility um, in there, but is there anything, Sean, that we need to do to help make that contract move forward with that? I think Suzanne Woodland, Deputy City Manager, is just trying to get all the parties on one phone call to get crystal clear on the funding and where it is and where it needs to be to then know that we can create a contract and start moving. Okay. Moving with, forward with Terrence. Anything we can do to help that? Mm -hmm. Happy to do. Okay. Um, Thank you. Because I, I think all of that's in place, so it shouldn't be challenging. But... Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. No, you're, you're. I think we just need to get all the parties in one place, and then because the the whole idea is just understanding the the funding and where it needs to be, such that we can get Terrence rolling. And to your point, all parties are protected because these dollars are in place; they're approved; they're approved for the funding for the for this art for this art. And um, and then it, then it becomes just a back and forth with the paper. Okay. Yeah. I feel like we just were one meeting away. Okay. Good. So something I have found out to the to the signage that we've all talked about, you know, the kiosk signage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Stephanie Secord, who is preparing a press release about the project, um, let me know. And I think this clears up some mysteries for us. The kiosk itself, the what we call the shed, um, was a requirement of the Federal Highway Administration as part of the mitigation for the Sarah Long Bridge and the new road that cuts from the Albacore over. Remember, you used to not be able to, oh, right. there was no road there. And so I assume it's because it's near water and it might have gone through wetlands or something. There was some mitigation associated with creating that road and the bridge. <laughs> so the Federal Highway Administration required that there be mitigation. And the mitigation that New Hampshire Department of Transportation and the State Historic Preservation Office came up with is that shed, what we call the shed, uh, along with some interpretive signage that is there that's about the albacore about the bridge you know if you if you've read it and um that was funded by the new hampshire department of transportation as you remember all of us have said where did that thing come from <laughs> um, and and now we understand because it does look like a salt shed you know when yeah. you think of it DOT. Is it because the road comes out? It's the, the way the road comes out. Because there didn't used to be a road there. Right. So the Stephanie, in doing this, kind of was reminding me, it's not going to be that easy to um, change uh, because the interpretive signage has been approved by the city, the Albacore, the State Historic Preservation Office, the National Park Service, New Hampshire DOT, and the State Historic Preservation Office. So that's why it took a while. Wow. Um, but I don't think we have any intention of changing anything. The wording, we just would like to have it in a better place. So, uh, but that's the history behind that, in case we were all wondering wow. how it's not <laughs> Because the artwork that was presented, the shed location itself is not changing. I mean, the shed is, is where it is, right? Is so where it is. Artwork would just be uh, enhance the beauty of it. Yeah. Shed. Yeah. Um, but it does, I have to say, makes me a little nervous to have found out that there were so many hands in this in this pie. Um, but 
uh, I think, you know, with public works and working that out, you know, it is a city stuff now, it's on city land, but that's where that signage came from. We can thank Stephanie for our historian for you. <laughs> um, so that means we have to keep that signage or or transfer it to a new. Well, I don't think we have to keep it necessarily in that place, but okay. it's probably not going to be that easy to, you know, if it was just in the hands of the city to say, could it go on to another podium or something? But it, it's a little more comp. It'll be a little more complicated than that. So I don't think we should try to do that right now. I think we should get the project underway, and then once people see, oh, it would be really nice if we moved. Um, so that's been a long time in the making because the Sarah Bridge was done probably a decade mm -hmm. ago. <laughs> um, we do. Uh, the city is ready to accept uh, Carl Hyatt's piece now, and they have identified, not the place we identified for it, but um, at the end of this hall. So hmm. you'll see it when you walk into the, uh, at a distance, which is gives it a good distance. And then anybody who goes to pay motor vehicle, wire bills, tax, everybody will have to go buy it, which I think is good. So uh, we've kind of- Is there of a salt tax? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it'll be a salt tax, right. Um, everybody Great who, uh, so we we uh, let Carl know that we're, we're ready for it. And Sean and Monty suggested a small ceremony that it'll be mounted and then covered and, you know, with the mayor and city manager can um, unveil it at an appropriate time, so. I had a question when you were discussing uh, the need for a contract for the other piece, the cod and the mortal sea, to protect all parties. Does that apply to things like art donations, other art donations? Or... No, I, I, I no, uh, because we we did the recommendation letter. I do think though that for the artists, what the artists should receive from the city is an acknowledgement back of the value, and I believe that's in the ordinance. Um, it, you know, for their purposes, right? But there's no, there's no funding required. To, yeah. Can I ask a question about the process of locating it and what what that process was and locating that? You know, the, the, uh, the decision. Manager decision referred to the city manager, and that's the and process we, and person with the authority. Right. Yes. I, okay. I, I, <laughs> knowing that this conversation was coming, I. I lobbied for the lobby, <laughs> as it were, as did Councilor Cook. Uh, a couple of things. That entryway is not complete, so there's still work to be done, mm -hmm. number one. And number two, it's the city manager's decision. Mm -hmm. I think there's different, I, as you might imagine, there's probably lots of conversation around what should what be, should go and I think this, and I think that, and so... Yeah. Um, can I ask another question? <laughs> yes. Is it the city manager's decision because it's in this building, or is any donated art the city manager's decision where to place it? Any. Um, Interesting. Yes. Any at all, I, I believe. Anywhere I, in the city. Well, it's city property, property, city property. Right. She, she, city property. Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, I would have put it here. I'm saying it's her decision, ultimately. I think it's important to note that the city manager has authority over the buildings and what goes where within the buildings. And um, and the reason that that's important and that it's her responsibility to make those calls is that otherwise we would have all kinds of interested parties um, sure. trying to tell us what we needed to do with City Hall, but not just City Hall, but all of our other buildings, our school buildings, what goes where in our school buildings. So that's why the city manager has that authority. Um, this committee, though, has the authority to accept art pieces, to um, like recommendations. make recommendations on where they go. And if the city council votes on an art piece and where it's going, the city manager is not going to turn around and and change that recommendation. So the other thing we noticed about the spot out here, which so many of us had favored, there was bench seating that has been mm. built in since we looked at it. Mm -hmm. And so that 
might have not been a good idea to have people sitting against a photograph. Mm -hmm. So I think there are some good things about the, and and it do, is a piece that some distance is mm -hmm. is helpful. It will look stunning there as well. I mean, the lobby is a great idea, um, but coming down that hallway, the piece is, you know, the, the scope and the scale of it is it's like the Egyptian pyramids. Yeah. Big salt fire. It looks stunning from a distance. And we have talked about moving it too, to different buildings and different yes. locations. So, yeah, I think it, uh, depending on what ends up happening when this is complete, there, there could be an opportunity down the road where it makes it makes sense. Just making sure you're hearing us, Ernie, yes? <laughs> Are you hearing us, Ernie? Oh, she is. Oh. Okay. oh. <laughs> I think she's trying to. She's trying to get off. Just want to make sure that yep. we're talking loud enough. She's trying to do something. They unmute her something. Yeah. What? Oh, there we go. I meet her. Anyway. <laughs> um, are there any other updates that people can think about or that we need to? Do you have everything you need for RFP comments? We do. That's going to be on oh, okay. the agenda. Um, so the next thing is the the changes in the public art ordinance. You know, we've you had those two meetings ago. We didn't have time to do it at the last meeting. I don't know if anybody's had any additions that they've looked at. Otherwise, we can just go ahead and get that to... Uh, we make a request of the city council. Yes, Kate, that legal would that the request is for the legal department to work on this. Yes. And usually um you can you can make a request that legal do it. You can make a request that um the governance committee also could okay. address it as okay. well. Um I know we have addressed many of those um changes to ordinances. Types of things, yeah. Yes. Okay. So Ellen um number six um in the Yes. Public art ordinances and policies. I think we need to clarify whether the member of the city staff is a voting member or non-voting liaison. Yes. Is that up to us to decide that? No, I don't. I don't think it's up to us. I think oh, okay. it would be up to um, the legal legal and governance to make a recommendation. Okay. I okay. mean, I I think we've assumed that they're not, and it's ambiguous in the ordinance. So it's really a request for them to give us the intent, make make clear the intent. Okay. I wasn't sure if we had to decide that before sending it to No, I don't think many of these are really except for the 30,000 mm -hmm. are really our decisions. It's more like how does legal want to handle this? Okay. Thank you. Um it was a different time and there all the players have changed now, but for the foundry place, our city person on our committee had voting rights. I, I think it's possible. I mean, there's different committees that with yes. were staff yeah, they were voting different. members. Yeah. I was the chair. Um, that person wasn't a liaison. They were a specific member. Right. It like was the, on the planning board. Yeah. The city manager and the facilities met director are voting members yeah, of the planning yeah. board. And that's by statute. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I that's why I don't know when you get yeah. it away. So we should, I mean, take their guidance. Right. right. And it's going to be different depending upon the committee. Um uh I chair the governance committee. So I work on a lot of these ordinance changes. And um some committees have staff liaisons that don't vote and others do. And the same thing with council. Their council representative votes or doesn't vote. Mm -hmm. Um, so it just really depends on the committee. As a committee designated with review, it, it might be easier in our case to argue that you could have voting members where it's not like, you know, we're a, a, a land use board or something. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah. let's see what they recommend. Mm -hmm. So for clarification, the request will go from 
chair. To, uh, I'll put this in a memo and send it to you to, me, to go to council. To, okay. Yeah. To go to council. Mm -hmm. And then the council, the the council process is to, the council will um, vote to send it to uh, governance for review. Governance does everything with legal. So, um, right. in fact, our staff liaison is the deputy city manager, who's the former deputy city attorney. Right. And I think it might be good. We can suggest in it that uh, they might want to come to this committee and have a discussion with us about any of the things that, you know, where opinion is helpful. So this isn't our last bite at this, but this just kicks <laughs> off the nose. <laughs> Seeks on here. Okay. Um, the Pierce Island RFP, uh, I think, with with some modest changes uh, that are that are tweaking and formatting and organizational rather than language, um, is is ready to go. Uh, legal reviewed it, and one thing we're not clear about. Alyssa gave some very helpful comments, and a number of her comments were. It's, it feels like what the legal department did was to put a like a pressy on it that then repeats information in the in the rest of the document. And we have a question as a question in whether that's intended to be sort of the announcement, the first part the mm. and then you follow up yeah. on the web for the longer or whether the whole thing is a document. And I think it'll matter how we treat some of the comments will matter into what they're what their answer is. Um, yeah, it seemed like um, their introduction was uh, made redundant, I, some of the descriptions. Yeah, that we that's have. a good way to say it, and potentially confusing. And that was Alyssa's point, that um, it can be confusing to, uh, to know what you're, what you're reading. Um, I, I want to circle back to the, the dates in it in a minute, but um, I've compiled this. It's it has earnings list, which Ernie and Nancy London went to great lengths to retrieve because Ernie had a new computer uh, since she had this list before. But her list of organizations that they sent the RFP for the Bohenko for Caesar Chen's piece. My additions, which are largely national and state contacts, the artists who submitted to the Bohenko project, their emails, and then other artists who were identified for the Bohenko Park where we had the emails, but who did not submit. Yep. So a, a, a number of individual artists, but then a number of these organizations like uh, Coda Works, Forecast Public Art, Artworks Archives. These are national aggregators who, you know, have uh, will put out calls for uh, art. Um, and Nancy, what I don't know is if there is a list that would be different than these for Foundry. I don't know if I kept that in my maniacal minimalist cleanup of my Google Drive. <laughs> well, I will look. If you didn't, uh, I will look. We will add it. But I wanted all of you to have this because we want to add to this, obviously. I mean, I think it's a really good list, but um, if you have individual artists, particularly, there's no harm in people getting two or three or four announcements of this. And I think, you know, most of these individual artists will belong to a number of these other things. So the fact that they might see three or four of these, I think is just fine. I will also check the hard drive of my predecessor to see if there is a list oh. <laughs> of this. And Chris, how do you want um, new names? Just, uh, here's what here's what I think after we bless the RFP tonight and get the dates. Um, I'd like to get the it out as soon as possible to people. So I would say on a rolling basis, as you think of other names, just send them to me by email and I'll just add them to the list um, so that we can, we don't want to delay yeah. getting this. And just to be clear, 
people, this is just to get the word out. People don't have to be invited. We can just, if we think of someone later, we can just forward them the link on the website. And it's all about encouraging them to forward on as well. Um, So so, um, if I may add a comment, um, a name that, unless I'm missing it, because I've had uh, just had a a long series of plane transfers and lack of sleep, but um, a name I don't see on here is uh, Jeffy Cooper, who's uh, emailed me that I passed on to you his first email, and then I got an email actually while I was in transit the last 24 hours saying that he has a group that are already putting Yeah, I know you meant... I don't see his name on here. Uh, well, Thomas Green is on here because he was one of the artists, and he was one mentioned, and also the New Hampshire Furniture Masters. So right. I know Jeff is a yeah, member of Jeff that. would get that. And Jeff yeah, but we can put Jeff on yeah. just so he can get multiple. We came to uh, one of our information. Right. I'll send you his email. Oops. I'll send it. I have... Because he's the on uh, the Arts and Culture Commission. Yes, yeah. so right. Actually, we should send it to the Arts and Culture Commission, of course. Mm-hmm. And we should send it, I think, to everybody who came to our mm-hmm. uh, public comment sessions for whom we have emails. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We should make sure Lisa Burke McCoy from New Hampshire Council on the Arts, mm-hmm. possibly for um, distribution. We put the New Hampshire Council people who are in charge of these grants. Is that what we did instead? Okay. That's what Emily and Cassie, Okay. Uh, they're the public art people. Um, so PMAC is what? Uh, PMAC. They don't really have that. Well, their A is smaller than their L. Um, I'll forward it to them. I mean, they do have a, a visual oh, arts committee, idea. and yeah. I can I, I have a whole list of people I intend to yeah. forward it to in my personal network. And that I mean, really, anybody yeah. like that that we're thinking of. And once this is totally finalized, you'll all get a link to the RFP, so you can just forward it as well. But I think it's great that we have a list going, so that once we, you know, for our next things, this will all be easier. Uh, Beth Falconer, I put on for 3S. She wasn't comfortable giving me the list of people, but she has a list that she's forwarded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so uh, ideally, uh, you know, over the next week. Now, I should ask uh, Sean, I'm assuming we can just send this. It doesn't have to go. I mean, they'll have it, obviously. Mm-hmm. We can we can do the forwarding because I'll tell you why because a number of these are personal contacts and I want to make sure that um, we have a personal message goes with the national organizations that we can. So the question is, can can I, I I'm just recalling from the last RFP that there was a wide distribution. It, I don't believe everything came from the. No, city. Ernie. Ernie did it all herself. I know. Well, we I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, the, the, the RFP for the sure. cultural plan. Yeah. That that didn't. I believe people were sending that out to everybody to their own personal list, sending out the link. Well, but I can certainly good. confirm that. Yeah. So, for example, I see Sanctuary Arts and Green Foundry, which are right over the border in Maine, right. and Christopher Gowell is a fantastic artist and sculptor and painter. Um, but like the Button Factory has dozens and dozens of studios, some of whom are sculptors or and we 3D. would love to get a list. I think we'll have to post it at the Button Factory. That's what we had to do for public art because there, as far as we know, there is not a list. That's what we tried to. You have a list, okay? <laughs> I organize the Open Studio every year along. That's when you had nice. List. So Yay. that'll be great to forward it. And uh, R- Rollingsford Mill, and there's an, another uh, studio building, uh, self storage place on McDonald Street. I think it is. Yeah. So any of the any of those where there are email contacts, you might reminding me also of Chase's Garage. I had a conversation with Legal today about this process, um, and. I think it's fine to share, but it needs to be on posted first by legal. Well, posted first on the city's website. On the website. city website. Yes. And then it can be shared from there. And I think it's also important, um, having done this with another committee, is you can share um, 
the RFP widely to email lists, but it's important that you're not having conversations with anyone about applications or the process because this is the review committee and you Very can't have important case conversations. Yes. Agreed. Yes. So yeah. where would we have yeah. them direct questions to? Well, that's in the RFP. Great. In the RFP. Our procurement. Yeah. Who will answer those questions and post the, the questions and answers for all to see. Yes, who didn't thoroughly read. Nancy. <laughs> Me. <laughs> and I was going to say, and the, the legal hope. department's happy to come and to talk to the committee about the process um, of once the RFP is issued about how that yeah. is handled. Yeah. So it's important, like Kate said, to as we forward it, particularly to individual artists, that we're in no way applying anything. It's like a, it's an FYI, oh, yeah. I thought you would want to know. Um, you know, it's a little bit different with the organizations that we might be asking to post it because they're not applying themselves, but we have to be very careful about that. And we have to be very careful that no one mistakenly assumes that um, they were promised anything, given any special information, et cetera. I was um, received an email within the last 24 hours I didn't even tell you what hour it was, but um, in some port in the middle of the airport um, from the artists, the woodworker who I mentioned uh, saying, where's the RFP? You know, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. So I was like really careful what I said and said that um, you know, the, the committee has been reviewing and working with the city legal department and it's important, we'll, you know, be meeting on such and such a date and when it's yeah. announced, you know, publicly, yeah, you'll have access to it. So I, even though I know him as a former neighbor and it's always hard worker, you know, yeah, it's very careful. It's always hard. Or on the other hand, if you do end up getting in such a situation, you can always recuse yourself from doing the review. You know, that might happen. Right? So. Yeah, I was going to say at the at the end of the day, the the. the the RFP process is very prescribed and, and that's to protect the city and to protect all parties and to keep the playing field level. So yeah. I think that's, and this is, for me, this is just a different process where you all are, are the review committee, right? And that's, yeah. and what we did previously was was a couple, it was the co-chairs and uh, of the cultural plan subcommittee. It was just, a, it was a small group with the same rules. Yeah. Same. So, I mean, that's the deal with the city, right? Everyone has to have the same opportunity mm -hmm. and we follow the same process and then things go as they should. So, Sean, will you be telling us when you've sent out, when you, when it's posted by the city so that yes. we all know that um, and send us what you would like us to send to people we know if, or do we need to send you the names of the people? No, I don't think so. I, but I do think the trigger, you know, that you mentioned, it's been posted. Okay to forward. Yeah. And we should forward the link yeah. on the yeah. on the yes. procurement, not our not what we just have personally. Thank you. So I'll get I'll and whatever guidance I receive, I'll pass on. Thank you. I'll ask for it. So let's think about schedule now. Let's assume that. Let's assume that this goes out next week, April 4th. Okay. Assuming that these are very minor cleanups, we have like one or two questions, we'll clean it up. And let's say it gets posted, you know, April 1 or 2. Questions do, and I thought this is a really good suggestion, Alyssa May. Questions do on April 24th, which is our meeting, so that we could do an executive session that right. night to be able to answer questions. You know, some of the questions we won't be able to answer, but mm -hmm. I think it would be great for us to have, see what people are being asked. You know, it's possible that we will have missed a crucial piece of information that we'd mm -hmm. like to post and get out to everybody. So the fact that we have a meeting that night, I think that is a great suggestion. Um, that gives, let's say, let's say people get to see this somewhere if it if it goes out april 1st they haven't looked at their email whatever maybe it's the 8th of april by the time they look at it that gives them uh three weeks really for questions which i think is probably reasonable you think so 
Yeah. So the questions will come into the procurement department. Yeah. And have to be sent to you, to this group. Yeah. If they don't know the answer. Well, I think they should be sent to this group because how will they know any of the answers? It may maybe it's it'll be a technical question it about the RFA. Could be. Yeah. But I still think we should see those. I mean, okay. we because it's important for us for our future, you know, for our future oh, yeah. RFPs to to know to get better at this, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. and we may not have all the questions if if we're meeting at 5 15 that night, you right. know, it's tight, but I I still think that's a good plan that uh and Alyssa had suggested April 24th by 2 p.m., which gives a little wiggle room in there. We see them, we go into executive session, and we we answer what we can. Um, do, you want to, do you want to say noon and give? Well, this is international. You know, I just want to oh, give right. everybody. Okay. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> um, then uh, Alyssa suggested, which I also think is a good idea, that we identify when we're posting responses and that we do it a week later. We post responses by April 30. Seems reasonable. Wait, so we will say FAQ, frequently asked questions or whatever, and put the questions and the answers. I love that. Yeah, that's really that's important. <laughs> as, <laughs> as someone who relies on these answers often, making being sure that everybody has the answers and you've seen all the questions yeah. is really, and, and knowing when they April will come. 27? No. Well, April 30, that 30. gives, um, you know, it's not a lot of time, but you can always at that point also post to say additional questions have been received look for over the next day or two for other answers if we need to. Mm -hmm. And once the frequently uh, asked questions are posted on April 30th, that doesn't mean that someone can't ask an additional question. No, <laughs> it closes the question. Right. In my experience at that point, if there's, an, if there's a technical mistake that somebody has found in the RFP, they you still respond to that. So, you know, let's say we we said it was due on June 10th, Wednesday, and June 10th is actually a Friday. And they they find that technical mistake. That's the kind of question that you could at that point. May I backtrack just a, a wee bit? Um, when you talked about, you know, not sending this out to individuals, obviously, until it's published on the website um, before we start forwarding it. Um, I presume that would also be published in the newspaper or other appropriate. Media. Well, that's a good question, Lenny. Um, what do people think about that? I mean, I presume that's a procurement process, an issue that's not our purview. City, city newsletter for sure, right? Mm -hmm. I would think it would be great if it were shared on the city's social media because that's easy to share as well. Is that an issue with the, we don't have to go through for here or anything for that. That's not an issue with them. We would just put a little blurb that. I mean, once, once it's issued by procurement, then it just becomes a distribution issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, would it go to like, for example, Seacoast online or. Well, we should do a press release yeah. for that purpose then. Right. I think that's good because it, especially if we wanted coverage for local artists, you know, who may not belong to any of these associations or organizations. Um, I think a press release is a good idea. I'm in a number of, of different art associations and some of us are in uh, closed Facebook groups and some are open Facebook groups. And then there's other artists who say, I don't do Facebook, so, you know, so <laughs> yeah. you know, I think the more ways that yeah, we can agreed. publicize this then, right. and nobody's left out. I think that's a good idea. The city is going to post it where it normally posts all its RFPs as well. So right, yeah. But but to your point, um, lining up a press release, yeah, is something I can work with. Monty, Monty. Monty. yeah, that's good. So all right, so let's go back to the date. So April twenty fourth. Just you know, thinking about this, wanting to make sure everybody has enough time to do these things. April thirty. And then what we had for a proposal submittal deadline was May 10th. Now we can 
you know, this is under our control at this point. So if we feel we should give longer, we can. So you get the questions on April 30th, and then May 10th, you would submit your proposal. It seems a little tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know if we had any outside deadlines that were affecting that, but if we don't, I would recommend extending it. I don't believe so. You all are just moving fast. Um, <laughs> like four weeks after the questions, we have, you know, if it's two sort of two months total due around, you know, end of May or beginning of June, that's if we move that to April 17th, which gives them essentially three weeks after they get the questions. We've we've put a selection committee review May for May so May seventeenth. No, sorry, May um, We put a selection committee review for some time in May thirteenth to twenty fourth. So we're still reasonably in our in our time frame. I think we can move that a week. And then we had said interviews. Uh, Alyssa uh, pushed it out a little bit to the week of May twenty seventh. All those are just quote anticipated. So, you know, it, it would be, and that would be for finalists. So that gives us a week. We perhaps want to buy a little more time there. May 27th do, would be for the finalists. That would be for us to do interviews with finalists. We probably want to push that out another week. Mm -hmm. That seems um, very compressed, I think. Um, mm -hmm. If someone is just to, just, has, n has never heard of this before and they're receiving sometime um, a press release or the RFP is published um, and they have to answer as ask questions by April 24th and respond by April 30th and then say, okay, your proposal is due within three weeks. Seems like a lot. But your proposal is really, we've really been giving you from like the first week in April to May 17th. Mm -hmm. I guess I would argue that the, your question could be really crucial to what you're doing. And if you're not getting the answer until the 30th, that that is compressed, even though you could have been thinking about it if the question is crucial to what what you're putting forward. So I have a question. More time later. <laughs> yeah. so because it's really broad, there's, this is not a request for a piece of sculpture or it's like right. literally wide open. Right. Mm -hmm. Might that create more questions? Could. Because it's 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 a location. Um, I don't know. So here's another thing. I mean, this is my business. I do this all the time. Another <laughs> thing that you sometimes do is you have rolling questions and answers. And that might mm. help with this. So we don't wait to post until April 30. We post in a couple of cycles. That's another thing that you can do. But you have to alert the uh, user that you have to keep checking. I guess I would <laughs> speak of, I would be trepidatious about that because you could assume, okay, now I have all the information and be proceeding with your proposal and then get an answer to a question that affects you. I don't know, I, I'm a proponent of one answer time period because then you really know, okay, I've got all of the information I'm going to get and I can proceed from there. I think the counter to that is early askers are getting on this and they want to have some guidance before they move forward and so yeah, as long as I guess there's a, a final end date. Well, there has to be a final. Yeah, sure. like all <laughs> questions will be answered. It doesn't it doesn't keep us from answering them early, but all questions will be answered by the 30th. Exactly. Okay, perfect. I like the idea of the rolling questions, and but I hear your point. But I think if it's clear, uh, uh, this is I it. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, that we will be uh, rolling out uh, frequently asked questions and, and there is a deadline for final questions by the state. I think if that's clear, then there's no harm and it's only beneficial. But we as a group won't have a chance to talk about that before that's due. Well, that would be, that would be the other challenge. <laughs> because we'd have to figure out how to get those answers uh, and they, as a group come up with something. If, they're, if, we've, if we've made a big, you know, omission of something. That's right. If we were to do that, I think we would need an interim 
meeting mm -hmm. where we would take the first batch. I was okay. going to say, if you scheduled the due date for the questions, the 24th instead of the 25th, the committee's meeting on the Well, oh, no, that's what we're doing, the 24th. Yeah, the, 24th. the 24th. And then the committee meets, discusses, answers yeah, that, the questions. No, that already you should be able to, you should be able to provide the answers the next day or the 26th. Like we could do a lot faster turnaround on the answers, I would think, than waiting until the 30th, if you invited legal here to make sure that you were answering them according to what they wanted. Um, yeah, I think that's that's possible as well. And maybe plan mm -hmm. that our meeting on the 24th might go a little longer okay. mm -hmm. so that yeah. we could make sure that we did that. Mm -hmm. So I have a question about the submission proposal deadline. We have it at the 17th. We meet on the 29th. What's the harm in pushing it back to the 24th, the Friday before Memorial Day? Mm -hmm. We're not even going to be meeting. I think that's fine. It's really up to us. That gives another another week in there for people to respond. Mm -hmm. So instead of the 17th, this the deadline would be the 24th. Then you've almost got two months of response mm -hmm. time, which is unheard of in the work that I do. <laughs> um, it's almost too long because you start second guessing yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But it gives people, <laughs> assuming I appreciate that it. people aren't going to hear about this right. until right. You know, three weeks in. Other, yeah. so. It's not going to be the person that's been emailing me. It's going to be, it's going to be the others. And we, have, we have May 27th set up as starting the interviews but again we don't meet till the 29th the 27th is memorial day so that might not it's be that it's the um, 29th that we meet right but we right now and according to my notes finalist interviews proposed for may 27th the week so, of. right but we aren't meeting until that wednesday mm -hmm. so yeah, kind of feel like it would be the following week that we would start. The I think you're right. So on the 29th, we could do another June 3rd meet in executive session, having done some individual ranking of proposals and then meet to select finalists during our meeting on the 29th. Yeah. Can you repeat that again? So you have a, an executive, an executive group that would parse out I just we would have an executive session so that we wouldn't be meeting in public. That's that would be the one difference. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that we could uh, decide our finalists during one of our regular meetings, taking advantage of our regular meetings rather than having to set up additional meetings. Then once the uh, finalist chosen, then that was a public meeting. Or not an executive. We're reserving the right for that to be able to identify the fine rest. Right. We've That's notified them to that. Yeah. So um, I don't think the interviews would be public, but we could identify who they are. And then the interviews ideally would be scheduled that next week, depending on what people can do, what their schedules can do. But the interviews might go into the first week in June. First week in June. Which still puts us, you know, we'd we're aiming for a contract by July 15th. So that that still puts us in pretty good shape. Chris, are we still looking for other community members to join the review committee? Um, that's something that we should discuss in terms of both Pierce Island as a site, um, as well as what we want to augment. Um, but, you know, we're not going to need them until the end of May at this point. So this is a pretty comfortable timeline compared to, for example, the Bohenko Gateway Park, which was a sh much shorter timeline. So if that works for people, then those meetings on the 24th and the 29th are really important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh. oh shoot. So but I'm we'll, out of town we'll on the get these dates all down in writing. So we have got them. And then um 
with Kate's point, I think having legal meet with us on the 24th for questions, just to make, and I don't know if anyone from procurement needs to as well. Which uh, April 24th? Yes, because that's, um, that's when questions would be in and we'd be responding. So other than that, I think we're in pretty good shape. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, we need to confirm that uh, it's that we'll they'll post, they'll email, but we'll email too. Yes, that means that. that would... Anything else you could think about related to Pierce? We're in pretty good shape. And remember, we reserve the right, you know, if we don't get what we, we don't like any of the plans and we don't think they respond to, we can do it again. And, mm -hmm. and also negotiate with individual people. If um, some come to the uh, surface and we like a part of something, but we don't think the whole thing works, that's a possibility as well. Um, so the cultural plan, that's the one other thing. Um, hey, Lenny, I don't know if you have thoughts about implications that from the cultural plan for um, our work. I noticed public art was only mentioned in one place, mm -hmm. even though when you look at it, oh, it's all of them. It's sure it lovely is. photographs of much of our wonderful public art, but it's only mentioned directly in the historical part, which is kind of ironic. I haven't had a chance to review this yet. I think that's a, a really wonderful example of how people I don't want to use the word take public art for granted but it's around us and we don't know what we're looking at it's true you know yeah it's true I think what's fascinating is in this process the cultural planning subcommittee the arts and nonprofits committee we're all very concerned about public art so it's interesting it doesn't come out in the wording here, um, but they still are very concerned and interested in public art, and there are always questions around it. So, um, so we were really careful in their ordinance to make sure that they always work in coordination with the Public Art Review Committee around issues of public art. Yeah, and notice that the word art making is used mm -hmm. where I think could have been inserted public art, but art making is, I think when they're talking about public art, at least in the physical spaces, that is what I read. Mm -hmm there physical accessibility <laughs> yes um uh affordability you know in, in the sense that public art is affordable for everybody right and that it's accessible to everybody um i think nancy's point is a really interesting one and something that we should really tune into that people so take it for granted that they don't even mention it and well we need to think about how to make sure that, um, you know, as we do our work, that we promote. When I was um, reading this, thinking of the intersection mm -hmm. of this with our committee, one of the areas where it seemed like we might cross paths was um, the pillar five, preserving our historical identity. Right. And it talks about historical markers and existing oh. wayfinding maps. So that's something I know we've talked about having yep. work done in that area. So the Arts and Culture Commission received this just earlier this week. They haven't even received their written copies. <laughs> but, um, and they're going to, they chose their leadership and they're going to get together and just got to come up with, what do we do with this? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, set some priorities, set some goals, uh, understanding they need to, report back to city council um, at the six month mark and the 12 month mark of the year. Uh, and just, they're excited about it. They're excited and they, 
they've got it. So, <laughs> that's what I can tell you. <laughs> but there's a lot there. And we tried to, I think Councilor Cook and I tried to put their mind at ease that this is not the how-to. This is the, it's aspirational and it's also practical. Um, but you all get to choose where you focus where you start. your energies. Yeah. 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 And hopefully it's a multi-year effort. To yeah. Um, may I make a, a comment on page nine? Photo. I'm sorry, which page are you on? Page nine on the photographs. It says, um, I'm plein air painting at Strawberry Bank. Um, I am a plein air painter and I uh, have led uh, in the past for a long, long time um, and taught plein air classes for free and led groups. But that is, um, so I sent out a call to a lot of my plein air friends um, that we were looking for artwork to put on the website, et cetera, um, and sent them on to Sean. But um, I, it says photo credit Lenny Mullaney. I did not take this photo, nor is that my painting. Uh, <laughs> wow. So, so how do you get credit for all these things? <laughs> so like I just had it and I was kind of sure. like, boy, that's a really nice painting. You secured it, <laughs> you secured it Lenny. Uh, so I just like, if, if someone, I were you, I would sign that painting. <laughs> <laughs> My fear is the person who painted it or who actually took the photograph, and it was probably the artist who took the photograph and sent it to me. And now I'm thinking, okay, who was the artist that sent that? Um, let's say, hey, Lenny <laughs> put her name on it and it's not her painting. So I know these are all published, but uh, I just merely forwarded things I got onward. I just in case I'm accused of someone else's word. It's in the minutes. Another case. <laughs> I did it. Is I there that. another case of that, or just that page? Not that I know of. No, because that's the only place where my so my my thought is uh, the digital version can be oh, sure. corrected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, sure. And that's how most people will see this: the digital version. Yeah, I don't think any. Yeah, there not yeah. that many people are going to see this. Okay. No, yeah, there are the, no. The, I think that would be. <laughs> So, um, Sean, are you suggesting Lenny should maybe figure out who who did send her this photo so she could credit that person? That you would have sent it to you would have sent it to Sean. Yeah. So right, you can look at your just, emails to figure out who who, who you sent it who to. You sent, yeah. 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 How'd you forward it? Good well, detective work. I looked just call me Nancy smart. Drew. <laughs> well. I, I want to bring up one thing. Um, it's kind of a hot topic right now. On page 16, pillar five, the cultural um, preserving our historical identity. And there's lots of things identify, preserve buildings, open spaces, nominate sites for the National Register, all of that. Well, right now, contrary to this adopted by the city council, the council is considering removing purview of um, solar panels and on in historic district properties from the mm -hmm. HDC and Portsmouth advocates. And now the Portsmouth Historical Society is working to educate the HDC on how preservation and sustainability can go hand yes. in hand. I know you know about this <laughs> using secretary of interior standards, other communities manage this. We don't need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And I'm wondering if this group wants to maybe alert the cultural planning committee that the city is about to do something that goes against one of these five pillars and they may not be making that connection. Or I'm more is there is it really against or is there a, a is there a a navigable line there? I'm sorry, Nancy. Could you clarify which of the five pillars you on page sixteen? Yeah, pillar number five, preserving our historical identity. Pillar number it says down in spaces and sites under A. Uh, uh, thing here, identi identifying spaces, sites, funding areas of. Uh, it says preserve buildings and open spaces. Uh -huh. I consider preserving buildings part of this conversation. Yeah. Nominate sites for the National Register. These neighborhoods are in the National Registry already. Right. Um, collaborate with city entities and preservation groups to create a plan to help. Well, we already have preservation groups trying to help. Mm -hmm. And it looks like right now the city council might want to take away the purview and I do understand it's controversial and I right now the HDC seems to not have a lot of 
experts on it that understand this, but we are trying to educate them that we can get to yes. And there can be, um, there can be both. It can be a both and, and mm-hmm. not an either or. And are you saying, Nancy, that that a little three kind of says that collaborate with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just that it's an example of that. It's yeah. So like for so so right now, it feels like the city is taking action that goes against something that they just mm-hmm. adopted in their cultural plan. Mm-hmm. That's all. I'm just pointing that out, wondering if we want to alert the because there are people that made this that that's happening. I don't know. Because they're not collaborating. Is that what you're saying? Yes, they're. So what they're not doing right now is the the motion. I don't know if you've been following yeah. the motion, Thank you. Councillor Denton, and it, and it looks like they want to take authority of the HDC um, for. Oh, I see what you're saying. Doing and solar so, solar panels on historic buildings, right? Because they say that homeowners should have the right to be doing sustainable practices, and experts in the field of historic preservation say so you can do that too. Are mm-hmm. Trying to say you can. Yeah. It may not be the way you initially thought, but you can get to yes. Yeah. And do both. You can still yeah. preserve the historic character of your building, not wreck your slate roof or whatever it is. What uh, not endanger our I see registry designation. Mm-hmm. So that the council should honor the collaboration yes. with the uh, preservation groups. Mm-hmm. And honor this pillar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's a that is uh, a really good thing to point out. I'm sure council Cook will do that. Yes, <laughs> she has been. <laughs> <laughs> Continue to make this argument. We have the channel. But I yes. think, you know, what happens is, is people don't show up. Um, so maybe if, maybe if the people that worked so hard on this from this committee kind of understood that, that something that they recommended and that the city adopted is right now in conversation, in public policy yeah. conversation, maybe they'll come to a meeting and say, hey. Yeah. You know, you're bringing up such a good point because many of these are generic statements mm-hmm. and that you have to the analysis that you just did or the thinking into the application is what's going to make it Mm -hmm. real. That's the really the key to having a plan like this. You know, that was that's been the struggle at the city. The last plan adopted in 2002. And we're just now at the planning board talking about creating um, studio space in, in artists homes and changing the ordinance to allow for that. And it was recommended in the 2002 plan but it was just kind of overlooked yeah for 20 years so so we're just getting to it and so that's what we we want to try to make sure we implement right. this yeah. plan and that's why sean's point you have to pick a couple of these key things to start with because a lot of them are happening so you have to say well what do you specifically do we want to have happen related to this mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure we'll talk more about this, but I think it's good for us to all get our thinking going around it. Going forward, you can watch the Arts Cultural Commission recording oh. recorded meetings. Oh, the co-chairs are Linnea Grimm and uh, Emma Stratton. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. It does have a heavy historical. Two historical. <laughs> <people. Yes. laughs> okay. Involved. That was yeah. actually, we received the most feedback during the cultural planning process around historic preservation. That was the number one thing that we heard about. From the public. Which is interesting. So that's public. interesting because when the Historical Society sent out its latest survey in, in preparation for strategic planning, what we heard from our respondents was more than programming, more than exhibitions, more than anything the Historical Society does they wanted the historical respondents wanted the historical society to advocate for historic preservation so the community is looking for people Mm -hmm. to do this which is why it's in these documents Mm -hmm. so i hope that the city council understands that but i don't know because i don't know who's going to meetings and explaining it to them So that's why I said mm-hmm. you want to reach out to the cultural. Well, I can. I can reach out to Emma and yeah. Linnea. I'll do it. It's me. I'll volunteer. <laughs> I think the timing is great because they are yes. getting ready to set okay. priorities. So their timing is okay. outstanding. 
Um, so uh, before we wrap up, uh, you're all going to look at your schedules and we'll, we'll come back and, and email any of us, the ones that you know you're not going to be there so we can tally and know. Um, otherwise, April 24th, of course, is, is still on. We'll send the dates out for um, what we just went through. And as soon as we know about the RFP, we will. Um, on our next meeting, we'll put the, the uh, sidewalk on our next meeting. Think about mm. that. And then, Jen, um, if we if you don't see that we have the criteria, I will remind you. You will remind <laughs> us. Um, and then I assume in the meantime, there may be some ceremony associated with it. Did you hear from Carl? I haven't heard back from Right, so we don't know when it's available. We don't know yet. Once it's time. available, we're ready to hang it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Drape it. Yep. Um, and I think that's it. Great work. Oh, good meeting. All right, so um, well, a motion so to adjourn. So, so moved. Oh, second. Second, Melissa. Second, Lenny and Melissa. Yep. Close my favorite. favorite or two <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired. Want to stick it? Stick them. Don't put it. Just put it. So exciting. God. I'll see all of you in May.